you can't faint. What am I talking about? A scripture, guys. It's Galatians 6 and 9. Let me see what it says. Let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Okay? So even if you are waiting on something, waiting on someone, waiting on your finances, waiting on different things to fall into place, connections and so on, you might hit a wall. And I don't mean physically punch the wall, but you, you know, like when you're running and you hit this wall that you don't see. And you might even stop and cry. But even, in, even while you're crying, tell your tears to go water the seeds that you have already sown, okay? Especially the good seeds that you have, you've already sown. So don't faint, all right? Whatever you're waiting for in the Lord, it'll come to pass, all right? And as long as you've got your health, hold on to that. No matter how broke you are, hold on to that. And for the people who don't have their health, we're praying you through, all right? And don't give up. Don't throw up your hands and give up because it doesn't solve anything. I can't tell you how many nights I've hit a wall here while I'm doing these vlogs and stuff and I'm like, I'm done. This is the last vlog I'm going to put up. I'm done. I'm tired. I don't want to do the cooking channel anymore because the cooking videos don't get a lot of views. But then again, you know what? I'm just so close. I'm so close. So why give up now? You know, the easiest thing to do is give up, but we won't. And Jada's back there. Jada, I want you to tell that cute little story you just told me that happened at the restaurant with Colin. but. Take the shorter version. Just get to the, the funny part. Me and Colin were out of the restaurant, and this weird guy, I think maybe he was homeless, maybe crazy and homeless, but um, kept going in and out, in and out, doing just weird stuff, and me being my mother's daughter, was like- Your grandmother's granddaughter. <laughs> where are all the exits? Mm -hmm. And what can I throw at this guy if he tries to pull something or shoot up the place? And uh -huh. stuff? You were discerning. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so I told Colin, I'm like, I'm just going to get him a box and we're going to pay and we're going to dip. And so we're walking out there and he's all like, he's like, why are you always so like this? I'm like, what? I'm like, watch, you're gonna, we're going to leave here and you're going to hear on the news that some crazy guy at Norm's pulled a shiv and stabbed this pretty waitress. <laughs> <laughs> and what then he looked at me and it was his problem, was it the whole part about the waitress getting stabbed uh -huh. was the part that only I would say the word shiv. So I had to look up the word because Jada said, is that a British word? Yeah, and maybe I, like, I don't know what? it. He's like, I've never heard that before. I'm like, what, do you want me to say shank? A shiv <laughs> and a shank is the same thing, Colin. Yeah. So it says, a shiv, listen to it, Josh. A shiv is a weapon made out of a commonplace object, often in prison. Isn't that the same thing as a shank? Mm -hmm. Huh? I thought a shiv Joshua a knife. should know he's into knives. A shiv is something an inmate. I told Colin that. I'm like, isn't shiv something from jail? Shiv is, yeah, when you make it like a little toothbrush or something like that. Or you make it out of soap, I didn't right? Think he had anything. Soap. How soap? Don't they make shivs out of soap too? Yeah. They yeah, they, they, they make shiv out of anything. The they make it off with a toothbrush. Those mm -hmm. I know the toothbrush one. I know so what is a shank? I think a shank. I think shank is doing the act of it. You can sh the shiving is an the shiv is the noun. Shiv is the noun, Jada. Yeah, shiv is a noun. Let's see what shank is. Look shank. at us looking up shiving. prison terminology. Shiving. Shiving. How do you spell shank? S H E N K. Shank is like, like, like um, knock your knee. No, no. You're shank. I shank. I shank is like you actually have a, a like a real weapon that you know like a knife. No. Right. Okay, no. Joshua was right. Shank is the verb and shiv is the noun. Yeah. So uh, shiv is the thing that you do the stabbing with and shank is the act of stabbing because it says the verb to stab <laughs> someone in the middle region of the body while trying to cover it up. Oh, it's a specific type of stab. Mm -hmm. mm, okay, with yeah, a small and, knife yeah, used for come, stabbing. They come at you and they press against you like what's good and they go ka, 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 and they run away. Oh, but a shank actually uses a small knife, Joshua. Ah! A shank uses a small knife. <laughs> Y'all, y'all are learning Bible, y'all are learning prison. Uh, I know my weapon. I, I, I try to business you. Dad, you think, you think, you think uh, 2003 Jeep Cherokee? Yes. Uh, 180,000 miles. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Miles 25. Yes. Yeah. MMR 725? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Do we still road? have yes. that guy's car that likes Jeeps? I don't know. Mom, are you fine? Huh? Do we still have that guy's car that likes Jeeps? We, we do. I don't know where, but we do. I think maybe in Dali Wallet. Well, we got another Jeep. You want it? <laughs> Colin, we, you coming by this Jeep? You know you pe want a Jeep. For some reason, people love Jeeps, so if we can get a good Jeep, yeah. I don't know why, but something with Colin's little car, maybe because it's a Toyota. But damn, that thing's 93 and the little thing still trucks. So the, the guy that's asking about the car, Joshua? Yeah, well. 
he sent me a text, but I think he meant to send it to somebody else. Oh, well. And it says, Sean, um, at Sean Dent Repair, do you think you can roll out this fender damage between the door and the wheel and between the headlight and the door? Doesn't have to be perfect, just look better. If so, approximate estimate, please. I haven't bought the car yet. I live in Menifee. <laughs> That's why I was stopping from buying a car is that a little bit of dent. But he says he wants to uh, to run it for Uber, so they him. might have rules. Uh -huh. I mean, like you sent that to me. Oh. That's what I text. I said, Jerry, you sent this to me, Barbara. No, I don't know. Unless he wants to CC me on this, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I don't think he CC'd me on this. He just, because it, Sean's is not in it at all. Sean's number mm -hmm. is not in it at all. So it's like, um, you're going to make one little dent, stop you from buying a car that's cheap, where you can like fix that. And, oh, God, Jesus. Let me oh, calm God. down. Well, Let God. me calm. God. How do people say it? C-A-L-M? Yeah. Calm yeah. down. Let me calm down. <laughs> No, I hate that. No, what? When people say calm. Yeah, just like when people say white. Or sound. But I do that sometimes to mess with you. White. Oh, well, that's funny. I know you're messing with me with that one. But salmon is wrong on every level. You know, salmon is just plain wrong. People just don't know how to say it. And you know what? That's not one of them that I correct. I don't really correct that. When people say salmon, I just look at them and go, okay, they don't know. No, I don't but correct. I will correct I and me. You use I and me wrong, I correct it on my breath. You use bring and take wrong, I correct it under my breath. Bring and take sends my sister nuts. You know, like if Jada is going to go with to Colin right now, use it wrong for me, Jada. Take this Bible. Take this Bible. Mom, I'm going to go to Ke um, Colin and I'm going to... Bring uh -huh. the Bible to him and I know it's take. Right, I'm going to take the Bible to him, not bring the Bible well, to I him. Well, I mean, I know it now. I mean, Steve Harvey, <laughs> Steve Harvey says it wrong all day long, but then he doesn't know grammar. But when I hear people that's supposed to know how to speak say it wrong, I lose my mind. Like, for instance, um, James Spader's character on the blacklist, he's supposed to know how to speak eloquently, and every now and again, they'll let him use bring and take wrong. And I'm like, that sends me nuts because he knows grammar. That character is, is well, you know, traveled and stuff like that. Um... Another one, uh, I've never heard it on Frasier, but Frasier always has perfect grammar along with Niles. And I like that the writers kept that true to the characters because that's what those characters are about. They're kind of anal, right? And they ha always have the grammar right. And I don't always use my own grammar right, but if I'm writing, I'm precise with my grammar. And in my speech, if I hear that I did it wrong, I go back and correct it. But in my writing, I make sure, I, and I write stuff like forthwith and, you know, oh, Lord have mercy. I was trained well. <laughs> like American dad my colleague and I it's my colleague and me subject pronoun Steve <laughs> and all that is is that how you can get I and me accurately each time if you're gonna put me in a sentence and you have a bunch of people in a sentence before me just remove the people out of the sentence and if it makes sense to use me in it you know because you'll know if it sounds wrong He says, oh, lol, I'll try again. Before Joe and Josh and I head out to the gym, I wanted to sit here for a few minutes and just tell you guys the kind of day that I've had, all right? So my day started off pretty blessed. I had my breakfast. I did my opening to the vlog. I hope that blessed you. That's what you, you just saw. I didn't vlog anything after that because I got a phone call. Uh, and after that phone call, the conversation that ensued just kind of angered me. And I found that when I'm that angry... I really need to find a way to calm down because first of all, I don't want to have a stroke. And secondly, um, I feel like if I don't put my anger to good use, then the anger was wasted, you know? So anyways, let's go back to where this thing started last night. So last night, I get a phone call from a person from Craigslist that's interested in the Grand Prix. He sounded like an older gentleman. I didn't know at the time he, that he was only 56, but he sounded like late 60s or whatever. And the first question out of his mouth was, are you the owner of the Grand Prix? Are, are you the name on, the, are you the person on the pink slip? And I said, no, I said, my son is the owner. He's a registered owner. I said, but he lives here with us. So if you're worried about, you know, meeting the owner and getting the right pink slip and everything, don't worry, because he'll be here if you come to buy the car. And so he goes, um, no, it's not that. He says, no disrespect, but... If you're not the owner, I'd prefer to talk with the owner because he's probably the one that's driving the car more. Well, I could see where he would figure that out, but our cars are community property in this house. You know what I mean? Even if it's in Joshua's name, 
any one of us get to drive it and even my Tahoe any one of them get to drive it and so on and so on the only car that we don't really drive too much is Jory's truck because that truck is valuable and we would prefer not to mess with it you know what I mean so I didn't argue with the guy I figure if it's if it's a guy he wants to talk with a guy so I went to go get Josh who was in the bathroom so I told him it'd be a minute for him to come out and can I answer any questions in the meanwhile? I asked him where he was located. You know, I want to know how far away they are because if they're like two, three hours away, they're not going to come. And so he's like an hour away in Riverside. And so um, he, he says, sure, I can ask you what's the miles on the car because we don't put a lot of information anymore on the ads because we found out that when you put a lot of information, they don't call to ask anything because they don't know what dialogue to open because the only thing that they really want to ask you when they call is, is that your final price and how low will you go? You know, that's what they really want to ask you, but some of them are ashamed to ask it. So they'll calling us, oh, what's the miles? And the miles is right there, you know, on the ad. So I found out, just leave stuff off. Don't put a whole lot of info. So he asked me the miles and I told him it was 115,000 miles. And then he was, he liked that, you know. So then uh, he asked if I was like the, if I was like the, the only owner, something, something to that degree. I'm like, no, I don't know how many owners it's had. My son bought it back in February. No, I don't have to tell this guy that I buy and sell cars because that car's in Joshua's name. So why should I have to offer a lot of information, right? So then Joshua came out of the bathroom by then and Joshua took the phone. Joshua was very pleasant to the guy. Uh, he asked Joshua why he wanted to sell the car. And I don't know why people ask that because honestly, if they're trying to find out if there's something wrong with the car, come see it. Come see it because if there's something wrong with it, I would tell you. And if there are other sellers that wouldn't tell you, do you think when you ask them why are you selling it, they're going to tell you the truth then? If they were going to lie anyways? So I don't, I really hate that question. And Joshua says, I'm selling it because I want a different car to go back to college with in September. And so then the guy was like, well, what kind of car do you want? <sighs> you want to get all up in our beeswax, right? So Joshua was like, I want a Nissan. So he started to tell Joshua stuff about not buying Nissans that are older than 2005 because they have transmission issues, yada, yada. And Joshua's, oh, Joshua's taking in all the information, being respectful. And he was like so long on the phone that he was starting to take Joe off. And Joe's like, get off the phone with this dude. Either he wants to buy the car or not pee or get off the pot, right? Because Joe don't play games with these people. So then Joshua's like, no, he's being nice. So I'm going to be respectful. So Joshua kept roping the conversation back around to, well, what else do you want to know about the car? Do you want to come see it? And so he kept asking the same crap over and over again. Are you sure you're the one on the pink slip? You know, um, why don't you go ahead and smug the car? And Josh was like, I'm not going to smug the car, sir, because I've already told you that we changed the catalytic converter. And because of that big change, it's not going to fail smog. I smogged it after we, you know, changed the catalytic converter. And, um, you know, I don't have to smog it. I don't have to, to smog the car for two years because I'm the owner. And it's the new owner that has to smog the car when they buy it because it's been past 90 days. And we keep saying, you know, California state law states this or whatever. And so the guy was like, oh, I want to come see the car. You know, I'm going to call you either way. Even if I don't even if I don't plan on coming, I'll call you tomorrow to let you know because I've sold many a cars and I don't want people to do this. I hate when people do that to me when they tell you they're going to come and then you don't hear from them and then you're waiting all day. And Joshua goes, I you know, I really appreciate that because you're right. People do do that, blah, 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 blah. And so then um, he's all like, maybe you want to go knock that out tomorrow. And Joshua says, knock what out? And he goes, knock out the um, smogging. So Joshua says, sir, I'm not going to smog the car. You know, if you're fearful, because then he told Joshua this long story. This guy was on the phone an hour with Joshua, wasting his time, okay? He told Joshua this long story about the fact that he bought a car a while back, and then the car seemed okay, but then he had to put $800 into the car immediately because it couldn't pass smog, yada, yada. Joshua says, I'm really sorry that somebody did that to you, but, you know, I'm not going to do that to you. I have a computer where I can plug it into the car to show you there's no codes, no pending codes. I can even, I can even take you down to the smog guy that we use, you pay him the $40. Normally his smog is 50 bucks, but because my dad, you know, does business with him, it'll be 40 bucks. You pay him right there in front of me. He'll smog it. You can take your car. You don't have to cry over that. You know, I'll be there right, right there with you. And the guy was like, oh, uh, trying to intimate that maybe we're buying the smog because we have a guy that we go to. So Joshua goes, who sells a smog for 40 bucks? You know, that's illegal. So if you're going to do something illegal, you better price it, you know, 200 or above. You know, that was starting to piss Joe off already. I'll, I'll be honest with you. So then Joshua didn't like when he said, maybe you want to knock that out, you know, the smog. So Joshua, he said, is there anything at all wrong with the car? Joshua says, I already told you it has a dent on the driver fender side and it does not affect the opening or closing of the door, but there's a dent there. You know, the picture shows the dent. I don't hide the, I don't hide the dent. And so um, he says, okay. I'll call you tomorrow. He got off the phone. So I got up, bushy-eyed and bright-tailed, 
I was getting my day um, started. I didn't have any hope on this guy, I'll be honest with you. My faith is strong, but I didn't have any hope on him because whenever they start to ask too many stupid questions, you can already tell they want to like take the price even lower. And Joshua had the price so stupid low that it was ridiculous. Honestly, Joshua had the, the price $100 less than what we bought the car for. We just want to sell it to move on to get something else. And so um, the guy called me this morning. That's when I was vlogging with you guys. And the guy said, please tell Josh that I won't be able to make it this morning, but I will come this evening after five. But I wanted to ask a favor. Could you send me some more pictures of the dent that's on the car? Because I want to see what the dent is. He wants to use the car for Uber. And I said, sure, no problem. So I sent him three close-up uh, pictures and a distant one and everything. And then he um, sends me a text afterwards. And I think the text was meant for the guy that he wanted to knock out the dent. And he was just like, can you give me an estimate on how much this is going to cost? I haven't bought the car yet, but, you know, it doesn't have to look pretty. Just kind of roll it out for me, yada, yada. And so then um, I texted him back and I said, hey, Jerry, you sent this text to me. Now, at that time, I really felt that this guy sent the text to me by accident. But what ensued afterwards make us, made up, makes us believe that he meant to send me that text to show me that he is shopping this thing around now, right? Like, to me, that was him being passive-aggressive trying to um, lower my price without even coming and the price was already dirt uh, dirt cheap and Joshua told him I'm selling it to you for exactly what I bought the car for because I need the money to buy another car so let me get my phone because I don't want to miss any of this texting that went back and forth okay hang on hang on I gotta make sure I'm not blurry because sometimes when you move and when you come back it's blurry so keep in mind that we don't ever let anybody know that the catalytic converter was on the warranty. We always let them feel like we had to put do that repair because we had to do quite a few repairs to the car that's making the car even more worthwhile. Now this car is valued $5,000 without the dent. With a dent, it, it's valued at $4,300 and we're selling it for so, so cheap that it's like unreal, right? So um, <clears throat> when he sent the thing, I said, Jerry, you sent this to me, Barbara. Then he goes, oh, LOL. I'll try again. I'm glad I asked for more pics. Josh described the damage as a small dent, but it's a series of dents and it looks like the door binds when open and closed. Does it at all? If so, that will need repair also. I think that's about 1500 to 2000 We already checked with the guys over there next door to Sergio, and it's not going to be more than $600 to take out that dent, but we don't want to do any of that. That's too much investment in this car, and it's not necessary because the dent is not ugly. And then he says... Um, 1500 to 2000 in damage with the front bumper something some crap you would I don't quite understand that and I said no it doesn't affect the opening or closing of the door meaning that there's no sound there's no ugly sound and it doesn't bind the door at all I said my advice I said the door open and closes freely my advice Jerry is for you to come and see the car before you make assumptions what's so hard about him driving an hour to come see the car before he's looking at pictures right so he comes back and he says well I want to find out how much to repair before I waste time and fuel well he was already wasting my time to, I, I was already getting inflamed because he was wasting my time already. And then uh, I didn't see this second text that he sent right after because by then I was ready to type in my response. So let me go to my response first. I said, my body work guy uh, told me that it's nothing um, le more than 600. I said, and actually it would be closer to 400 if you want to go to him. I said, but I'm not putting, putting any more into the car. The catalytic converter was $1,700. Now, I never told him I paid that, right? I just told him it was $1,700. I appreciate what you're trying to do. Just keep in mind that the price is low compared to the value. If you do plan on coming, please be aware that only if you are serious about buying will you get the test drive because we're starting to lay down the law when it comes to our cars because these people come and test drive and you run the risk of them crashing your car. They burn, they burn out your gas and then they still walk away and, and don't buy anything. So people have advised us, my dealer ha advised me, just go ahead and make sure they have money in hand and let them show you the money before they test drive the car. So that's when I went back and saw his second text that says, how much I can pay depends on the repair cost. Now y'all know that's what he was gunning for when he sent me the text by accident, right? He wants to take the price even lower. And I already told him in, this morning on the phone, the price that you see is the price that we're gonna, um, you know, that you're gonna pay for the car because it's not gonna go any lower. It's already uh, dirt, uh, dirt cheap. And he goes, that's fine. But that estimate of uh, four to 600 is way too low. And w, w A Y is all caps, too low, Barbara. And I said, Jerry, I'm sorry, but we feel, by then, Joshua and Joe came back from the auction. To, they went to go look at a blazer that turned out to be a bust. And they came back from the auction and I said, I don't know if it's me, maybe I'm, a, maybe I'm in a mood, but this guy's really taking me off. 
I said, tell me if it's me. Because I always ask people if it's me. Because maybe I'm the grumpy one, right? And Joshua was in rage. Joshua says, he pissed me off even last night when he was like, maybe you want to knock that out, that smog. And so Joshua says, mommy, get rid of this guy. You know, as much as we want to sell the car, he's not going to be the customer. And so I said, Jerry, I'm sorry, but we feel you may be a problem to deal with. I don't think this car is for you. So respectfully, we won't waste any more of your time. Good luck with your search. It was nice meeting you. You know, very pleasant, right? He comes back. A problem? Question mark. I'm trying to find out how much uh, the repair will cost. By the way, next time you need a cat, go to the muffler shop. It would have saved you $800. Oh, my God. Hold me. Hold, take my earring. Take out my earrings. Hold my goal. Hold my goal because that's that's where I was. That's where your girl was, okay? Hold my goal because I was going to beat this man. I mean, he was not here when we bought this car and we were in tears because the cat cost $1,700 and the cheapest Sergio could do it for was 13. He would have paid 12 to the dealer for it and charged me $100 to put it on. And then when he went to the dealer, the dealer wanted 17. And the only reason they got to do it is because they did it for free because it was under warranty or else I would have had to come up with 13 to Sergio. And he comes with his load of crap. This car has a specific thing on the engine that tells the mechanics that they're not allowed to put on an aftermarket cat in California or New York. Even if I wanted to play the fool and pretend like I came from Utah where Brian lived, because this was when, you know, Brian lived in Utah, and I could say, oh, well, you know, I went to Utah for a visit and the thing failed and I fixed it there and look, looky loo, I came in. It's registered in California. They will not accept it. The minute you put the car on the computer, that uh, let it pass smog, the, the computer will detect it, and they'll know somebody tampered with the cat, and they'll know they put on an aftermarket cat, and we will be in trouble. No mechanic even want to put it on for you, not even the shady mechanics that do it by the street side. They're like, nah, nah, that's federal law, man. We ain't going to touch that. You're going to have to suck it up and buy that part from the dealer. We went through hell. We went through hell. We went to all the stores, and praise God, Praise God, God had a blessing for us in this car to where the dealer changed it and they didn't give us any hassle, right? So no, you go and tell me something. And so he made me mad. I wasn't going to answer this guy, but he made me so mad. I said, California and New York state law. These are the only two states that have this rule, okay? All the other states you can get away with aftermarket cat for $300. This specific car was in a test group. That's why they, you have to buy dealer parts when it comes to anything to do with the exhaust and emissions. And I said, California and New York state law dictates that the catalytic converter on this specific car, not all Pontiac Grand Prix, this car, be dealer part only. Believe me when I tell you, we looked at everything we could do to not to have to buy the dealer part. But we do things legally, so we had to abide by California state law. I'm letting him know, right? The guy come actually Barb. Oh, sweet Jesus. Don't call me Barb. Don't call me Barb. I know a lot of you call me Barb, but I hate that name. I never correct you because I hate that name. That's why I put Babs Bear Top. <laughs> but I never correct you because I know you guys say it in love, you know, but he wasn't saying this. How, how dare you take liberties and sh shorten my name? I don't do that. If I meet a Rebecca and they say my name is Rebecca, I will say, do you want to be called Rebecca or can I call you Becky? Right? If I meet a Michael, can I call you Mike or do you want to go by Michael? You know, I ask people what they want to be called. I don't just assume that they want to be called a shortened version. We don't have Barb's in Belize. We have Babs, Barbara or Babs. Barb was when I got over here and I always say Barb is a fat white chick in Kansas because that was my cousin's wife. I hated her. So anyways, actually Barb, there are aftermarket cats that California approved and are legal. They cost hundreds less. Next time, I'm getting mad again. Not really. I'm already calm. You need car advice. Feel free to contact me. I hate it when people pay too much for their car repairs. I'm 56, and I have owned over 70 cars in my life. 56 and 70 cars? That's not even one car per year. What is he doing? He's buying and selling cars too, right? So then I said, great, Jerry. So you've owned the car and been through what I've been through to replace the converter legally. There is no aftermarket you can buy in California and you can't have someone in another state buy it or send it here because no mechanic that's worth their weight in gold and are doing business legally will put it on. I said, then when he's with, that's, I answered him before he sent the last one where he says, next time you call me for advice. And so this is the one I, I said, Jerry, you'd be the last person I would call for advice because you seem to be a know-it-all. I was very nice to you and would appreciate if you would move on. He goes, wow.
How rude of you. I told you my knowledge comes from owning over 70 cars in about 40 years since I was 16. But you're right. We can't do business because you have a very short fuse. I don't trust you. Your passive aggression comments show you're hiding something. To think I'm, I'm going to get, hand you over my money without looking into the repair costs of the car. Go try to take advantage of someone else. Shame on you. Man. He thinks he's firing me. I fired him a while back. You all saw that, right? I these people take me off, y'all. And you know what? Any business that we do, we're going to find idiots like this. And we found worse idiots like this in my bottle printing business. And what hurt us in the, in the business is that we had sometimes would have already printed the bottle before we met a jerk like this. I don't want to pay the rest of the money. At least with this fool, I still have my car. You know what I mean? And I don't give them my address, so he can't find me. Well, Jada went and wrote him. Jada took that thing and Jada says, he won't give you a straight hand. Jada was straight up. I can't show you this. Jada straight up cussed him out. And Jada says, and don't contact us again because we're going to block you. And so that was that. So he really angered me <laughs> to the point that I really had to go into prayer. And, you know, anger, the Bible says you can be angry. The Bible says you can, he says, I, I prefer for you to be angry so you don't sin. You know, so you can be angry, but don't let the sun go down on your wrath. So it's evening. It's after five. I'm going to let the sun go down on my wrath. And I'm going to trust that Tracy, who is standing in agreement with me, I know the rest of you are standing in agreement with me too, but I keep reaching out to Tracy because I know Tracy's working on this. Stand in agreement with me. The right person has to come. Really and truly, the right person has to come. My deadline that I have is for tomorrow because I'm dead in the water tomorrow, but I trust God. I trust God that he will provide for me whatever I need. This is from the Ice House. Did I tell you guys that my sister bought tickets for herself and her husband and me and Joe? Um, to go see Sherry at the Ice House in Pasadena in August. We're so looking forward to it. We already t uh, texted Sherry and she's excited to have us come. That's, I, I guess, is going to be my birthday treat from my sister, which is way cool. But today is barely August the 9th. It would have been my aunt uh, Tylene's birthday had she lived. She died at age 98 in 2004 at, well, on uh, Christmas Eve. That was a sad Christmas for us, even though she was older because... You know, we loved her dearly. She raised me. You know, my mom raised me too, but I spent a lot of time at my grandma's. And because my grandma had the stroke, her two sisters that lived with her really put a hand on raising us. She was the one that taught me how to make the breads and all that stuff. She would have had a birthday today, but she would have been super old if she lived. But you know what? She had an uncle that lived to be 105. Remember that picture that I showed in the um, Ancestry DNA where this little baby was sitting on the great grandma lap, uh, great grandma's lap, that the grandma that looked native? That was my Aunt Tylene. And uh, the young guy that was in the picture with the pretty eyes, he was her uncle, and he lived to be 105. So I guess there's long life in certain part of my family and short life in another part. <laughs> yeah, so anyways, I think I've told you guys the whole story. And I don't want any of you that may have called me Barb to feel bad. You know, he just kind of ticked me off because he doesn't get the right to do that. You don't get the right to short my name without asking me. But in case you do want to know, I would, be prefer I would prefer to be called Babs or Barbara. You know, so that's just... Like Joshua, when he was younger, he never wanted to be called Josh. He wanted to be called Joshua. Now he doesn't care. You know what I mean? Anyways, guys, um, this is my witching hour. This is like the saddest part of the day for me because every time the day starts off with so much hope and then by the end of the day when nothing has moved, um, you feel kind of like, oh. So I have to go build myself up. I mean, that will happen to you throughout the day, okay? You're going to have certain parts of the day when you're going to feel less than. Maybe for you, it's early morning. Uh, maybe for you, it's in the evening. Maybe it's afternoon before lunch. For me, it's always around 5 o'clock in the evening because it's like, man, nobody bought this car again today. You know, come on, guys. Come on, God. Work your thing. Work your thing. So I'll go to the gym because that always, you know, what what what, what gets in you? Is it adrenaline? I don't know what it is that gets in you. That it, It's not adrenaline, right? I forget what the hormone is <laughs> that pops in when you go to the gym that this activated that makes you feel good, you know. So, Jada's over at Colin doing music. Jory's at work. And the three of us are going to go to the gym and work out and come back in. And I'll see you guys when I come back in, okay? Um, by the time you guys see this vlog, I would have already released a video at the review channel. And so maybe some of you may have seen it because I know that a lot of you that watch my vlogs are also subscribed to my other two channels. And thank you for that, all right? Thanks so much for that. So, I put up a review. I didn't tell you guys, I didn't even tell Shanika because when Shanika was there Saturday and Jory was talking about this diet, 
I was like, nah, uh-uh, I ain't gonna do this, mm -mm, mm -mm. And then, Shanika, you know how Jory can be. He forced me. And I figured, you know what the heck, let's try it and review it. Anything for some content for a video, right? I think I have nuts on my teeth. <laughs> some pecans. Anyways, um, that military diet, the first and the second day was okay. You know, we didn't have any issues. The third day was the worst. And after going through it and losing the eight or nine pounds that I lost, yes, Shanika, eight to nine pounds. You know why I didn't take the nine pounds on the video if you've seen the video already? It's because I know when I weighed, it was, you know, whatever point something. And when I went back, it went to the next lowest number. But let's say if it's like 198.2, and then now I went back and it's 197, I, did, I don't think I really lost a whole pound. I just lost a few ounces to get to the lower number. So I didn't, I didn't take the nine, I took the eight. Eight pounds lost for me, eight pounds lost for Jory. And, it, and that happened in three days. But it's a very low calorie diet. And I think it's meant for you to do like once a week and then eat like a normal uh, caloric amount for the next four days. But I don't even know if that's something that I can do a second time because of the third day. <laughs> Because after dinner, I got super emotional and I think it's because I was so darn hungry And you know what? I wasn't hungry in my body. I was hungry in my head. You know, it's really weird But my sister wants to do it And I think she wants to do it after the kids go back to school on the 15th So maybe if she does it, maybe by then I'll be over it. It's kind of like labor pains You go through it and it's rough and you say you'll never do it again and then pretty soon, two years later, you're having a second baby. It's kind of like that. <laughs> so Joe told me, why don't you try to do it like once a month only and then lose, you know, five to eight pounds once a month and then continue your good, healthy eating that you're doing. I'm like, oh, I might do it one more time with my sister and that's it. Mm -hmm. Once a month, you keep crazy. I'm going to just keep eating healthy. <laughs> I'm working on my fitness though because think about it. If I get to go on TV as a contributor, you know that's my dream, right? I keep telling you guys. If I get to go on TV as a contributor, I want to look my best. I don't want to have to hide behind the, the island at the counter and stuff and, you know, don't turn my body sideways because I don't like the way I look there. You know, I don't want to do that. So, plus, if I want to continue these mukbangs, even though I don't binge, I'm going to have to make sure that I'm always eating well so that when the day of the mukbang comes, I might, you know? So, Josh. What about that stupid man? Aren't you sorry you wasted an hour with him? Yeah. Yeah, I am. <laughs> and we kept telling Josh, get off the phone. Get off the phone with this guy. He's not going to buy nothing. Mm -hmm. And we're not negative people, you know? We're not. But we can't, we, we're, we're kind of good at judging people now, you know? And I'll tell you the truth. From all the cars that I've sold, it's the people who are like, like us that are the nicest yep. black people I'm sorry to say it that way but black people when they come and buy your vehicle they don't try to drive the price down if the car has flaws you can tell them and they're okay with it I've had two white people come to that were awesome the guy who bought the little minivan oh wow who broke my phone and the first guy that bought my first car his name was Leroy but he was white and those two people were the nicest but I haven't had too many white people, right, Josh? No. The next one is SJW. The next one is SJW. As far as I get the machine out, how long I got? I just get started. Huh? You know, like the dog, the machine will do some bread press. Oh. Oh yeah, right. They they hound you. Joe, the real up guys. Joe said, as soon as you get the machine at the gym, people come and hound you. Like, they how do. long are you gonna be there? That's why I wear these shades yeah. because they can't make any eye contact, and so they don't talk to me. I should get some shades too. They figure if they can't see my eyes, I can't see them. Where did Trey going? Oh, there's a lane over there. Yeah, but watch it. You know, they say turning, wide turning. Turn. So um. The workout helped a whole lot. Joshua, what's the name of the hormone that gets released when you work out? Uh, it's not adrenaline. Adrenaline no, is what gets released when, when you are like panicked. Or, yeah, when you're Joe, what's the name of the um, hormone that gets released when you work out? It's the one you feel good, right? Uh, yeah. Not endorphins, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Joshua, look at Joshua. Ding, 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 ding. Endorphins. Yeah, no. The endorphins make us feel a whole lot better. That's why it's so. bad to be a drug user. Um, <laughs> our cousin explained this to us because he deals with them. Uh -huh. The drugs make you fire off your endorphins so much faster. Uh -huh. You only have a, you, you have a 
a finite amount of it. So oh, really? when you burn it out, it doesn't come back. So that's why when you're drugging, you have to It's like harder. MSG. Yeah. MSG lets your neurons in your brain fire off and fire and fire and fire and fire. And then it, it fires till it dies. And then when it dies, you can't reclaim it. So MSG causes brain damage. That's why I'm always talking against MSG. So imagine that you have your starter for the car, right? And you start it and it ignites and it starts, starts, starts. You keep doing that, it's gonna die. Exactly. You know, that's why you only start the car once and you go. It doesn't keep, it doesn't keep starting while you're driving. You know, so. But anyways, guys, There's I feel really good. You know, it's packed again. I feel really good. Oh, the other day we made a come home yeah. and there was this guy that got trapped in the in and out line and expect that he was going to let him in and that he closed in on him and he was mad. I think he wanted to shoot us. I was like, oh Lord, please don't shoot me. So, um, I, I'm feeling a lot better. I want to end the vlog now because when I go home, I want to eat um, some dinner I'm and um, relax a little bit, watch some TV. So I want to ask you guys to thumbs up if you like it. Uh, go ahead and subscribe please if you have not subscribed yet. I got a couple of new sub new subscribers today And if you're new and you want a little shout out put something in the comments so I can know who you are Okay, because we have a little family going here and I don't want to like just you know Focus on everybody that's been in the family and then leave you guys out. All right, you guys are newcomers say hello And I'll say hello back and I do try to answer majority of my comments. Okay, so I'll see you guys tomorrow night I love you all so much and um, keep praying for me as I keep praying for you all, okay? Bye! You got the red button is on? Yeah. Okay. Okay, guys, see, I'm doing it. This is ready. He's, he doesn't want to go back on the boat. Splash. Splash? Yeah.